Hey, everyone. Oh, we need to talk about canary creams. Oh, no. This Give me some so canary good. cream stuff. I love that. That like that whole business, I support. Yeah? So Fred and George making yeah. a killing off of that? That was really funny. What is a canary cream? Figured the eater into a large canary. <laughs> <laughs> Within a minute, the person would molt their feathers and revert to their normal human form. That, that is, is so, cool. so great. Fred and George are low key, I think, the two most brilliant people in these books. Like the actual ability to make products like that, where you eat this canary cream and it transfigures you for about a minute into a canary. Yeah. They're is, like inventing magic, yes. basically. That is no joke. Insane. <laughs> How good of magic that is! They would they would have done fantastic in the uh, in the uh, Triwizard Tournament. Yeah, why didn't they enter? They tried. Oh yeah, they. Just, duh. <laughs> I knew that. They're mm -hmm. not old enough. No, I feel not like old they enough. should be old enough. I know now. they're freaking six years. They should be old enough. Um, okay, well, anyway, welcome to the podcast. I'm John. And I'm Lizzie. And this is Harry Potter and the First Time Readers. Second Time Readers. <laughs> okay, yikes. Every <laughs> single time. I literally did it at the close of the last podcast, too. First Time Readers. All right, we are on chapter 23. We're going to do chapter 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. So five. We're going to speed through these. Yikes. It's a lot. Go real quick. But the Yule Ball... Cute little chapter where they have the Yule Ball. They, <laughs> they all indeed. dance. They have a good time. Crum and Hermione, you know, are having a great time. Ron's a bit of a turd. <laughs> but that's kind of a Yule Ball. What uh, what notes did you have about this chapter? Um, Dobby gets some good time mm. in these. He talks about Ron. Mm. Um, I also... I was like, who does Hermione actually go with? I could not remember. And then I called it, and then I was so happy that yeah? I called it. I was like, yes. I love that. Who do you think Hermione is better with, Ron or Crumb? Probably Crumb. Yeah? Yeah. I like Hermione and Crumb better than Hermione and Ron. Hmm. I, don't I know kind of... Hermione is... Hermione is essentially pulling like the greatest athlete of the time with ease. Yeah. Which is like good on Hermione. <laughs> that is unbelievable that she's able to do this. And he's genuinely into her too. Yes. Like she's at the bottom of the yeah. lake. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So that really solidified it for me. But like that's so nice because he could be cocky and yeah. just like overlook her. But he really likes her and she's a nerd and yeah. it's just something about that works. I know. I, I love know. it because he's like a little chatterbox. He's just like hanging out with her at the Yule Ball. They're just chatting. They're just dancing. It's like yeah. super cute of them. And Ron is just being a sour idiot. Ron like knew what was going on, but then I don't know. Yeah. he's. I think Ron is in the wrong for sure. Like being jealous. I feel like you could have been jealous. You could have had that out that night and then that be that but like why are you jealous like come on this is not like <laughs> harry didn't ask for this oh so you're you're saying you're mad at ron's jealousy of harry yeah not of his jealousy for crumb is this jealousy of crumb cute or but annoying i didn't really pick up that he was jealous of crumb right here okay like i get that he was annoyed and hermione and him got in a fight but like i don't know i still was not like does he actually like her Hmm, interesting. Because, I don't know, maybe boys are just dumb. But. <laughs> so it's still just his jealousy over Harry. That's interesting. And then Crumb jumps into the picture and Crumb's a champion too. So Ron's mad about that. But like, Fascinating. No, I don't know. I don't stand by that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I Undo mean, that. it is partially true because when Ron looks into the mirror of Arisad in the first book, he sees himself standing alone, like better than all his brothers. So Ron does have a huge desire for glory. So because these two champions are surrounding him, he's like jealous and a little ticked off at them. So it's definitely some of that. But does Ron like Hermione? I think so. Because like, in this chapter, Hermione gets mad because she's like, you should have just asked me yourself. Yeah, but he like doesn't have anything good to say that. He's just like... Yeah. Rah. Yeah, yeah. He's like know. taking so... Well, uh, he's taken aback because 
Hermione hit the nail on the head, and he was not expecting that at all. So it's like when when you're arguing with someone, and someone just like says like flat out the truth, and you're like, "Oh, crap! I don't know what I do. I don't know <laughs> what I you do." Just now. Be like, well, do you just want to go out? <laughs> and then just yeah. like seriously resolve that. Yeah, I don't know. I well, just Hermione, you want to talk over you know canary creams about this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know ron is really annoying and inconsistent yeah. and i feel like he should just suck it up yeah i'm curious how uh, your opinions of all these characters are going to progress with hermione and ron and crumb and harry and all these other people <laughs> there is a great little instance here where um they're talking about the castle and they say, are we not right to be proud that we alone know our school secrets and rights to protect them? Oh, I would never dream of assuming I know all of Hogwarts secrets, Igor said Dumbledore amicably. Only this morning, for instance, I took a wrong turn and on the way to the bathroom, I, and I found myself in a beautifully proportioned room I've never seen before containing a really rather magnificent collection of chamber pots. <laughs> when I went back to investigate more closely, I discovered that the room had vanished. <laughs> uh, it's a, I, a stupid little line that I love because it's like Dumbledore doesn't even know all the secrets of the castle and he's just in joy and ecstasy over magic I love that so is much is that the room of requirement or that's yeah that? that's it actually is? why I read okay. it to put it on your mind about that because <laughs> you told me about that before for yeah. something I think yeah uh, and then when I read it I was like is that what that is yeah that is the room of requirement hmm. So, yeah, most people think that he walked by the room requirement. And he already, most people think he knows about the room requirement. But he was just like being, you know, pleasant and amicable about this this room that he found. That he's like, oh, I don't know, all of the secrets of the castle. I think that's great. I love that. Yeah. And I'm sure he doesn't know all the secrets. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah, yeah. Um... What other you have any other notes on this chapter? Um is this one? Wait. Karkaroff and Snape get into a heated fight in this one. Is this one Rita writes about giants? Mm, or is that chapter twenty four? It's the next chapter. Cause this is where Haggard gives the information that he is. Cause she's <laughs> But okay. That was so bad. I know. That was so I was so like awkward. dying. That was nails on a chalkboard. I know. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she's definitely a giant. Or what's her name? Madame Maxime. Madame Maxime is definitely a giant. Yeah. And she knows it. Like yeah, I know. So she doesn't want to admit it because she gets persecuted for it. But like, how do people not know you're a giant anyways? They're like Haggard must have had like a potion when well, he was a kid yeah yeah that's what they said he must have or he got on the bad end of, it, end of an engorsement charm i guess people just kind of like have their fingers crossed they just hope he's not a giant because they have such bad opinions of giants giants are brutal we'll learn that a little little later mm -hmm. but uh it is just a it's dirty it's, that's dirty journalism i don't like when she's going after other people i thought madame maxime should have just not said any of that <laughs> like <laughs> i maybe she wanted an out maybe she doesn't want to go out with hagrid yeah, 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 and sure. that's her way was, out yeah. but i was like come on she was just coming up with some ick that she has yeah. so she's like i don't like you anymore big bones yeah i know that was Not so fun. awkward though um yeah how do you think rita is learning about all this stuff i think she transfigures or is in, in a magus into a mosquito and that's why they call her the skeeter <laughs> <laughs> she's a fly on the wall because <laughs> i was like look i call mosquitoes skeeters yeah, yeah, she's sure. so Rita annoying skeeter, and she's so everywhere funny. so she's a mosquito that's a great prediction that's so yeah. funny i like it that's definitely how <laughs> um what do you think of snape and karkaroff they get in a little debate here they're showing their brands on their arm it's a little strange yeah it's, they are definitely both death eaters okay from previous days yeah and i don't know i haven't figured all that out yet but i feel like are they like they're arguing right yes so they don't like each other? Um, 
Yeah, it's, it could be interpreted that way. I mean, like, there are people who argue and they like each other, but they just argue. They could just be arguing about, like, you know, how to interpret the signs or something like that. I don't know. The signs. Yeah. I think Snape... Are, okay. Karkaroff is probably still, like, an active death eater. Okay. And Snape is probably not an active death eater. And they are having a little tussle about that. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Because it's time to rejoin and Snape's not rejoining. <laughs> All right, know. all right. Hmm, that's a that's a fascinating one. <laughs> we will dive into that very oh. deeply later on. Uh, okay. Anything else in the chapter? We'll go to chapter twenty-four. We'll speed through these ones quick. Let's go. All right, chapter twenty-four. Read a Skeeter scoop. This is when we got the nasty journalism about Hagrid and being a giant. It's pretty gross that she uh, uses that against Hagrid. But that's pretty much what happens in this chapter. Um, they have a discussion about uh, Barty Crouch, um, yada, yada, yada. It's, it's a, a little interesting thing. Yeah, I definitely do not like Rita. But then when I was reading this article that she wrote, I was hanging on every word. I was like, oh, my gosh, giants are like this. And I just believed yeah. everything she <laughs> yes, said. Yes, because she's a great writer. So then <laughs> I was like, man, am I a hypocrite? But like I 100% <laughs> she has to be telling the truth. So I don't know. Because I fully believe, like, everything about Freed Wolfa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, his yeah, yeah. mom. Yep, yep, yep. What a terrible name. Yeah. She gets the facts. I don't know. I don't know. She might get them in unethical ways, but Rita gets the facts. And she knows how to, you know, write those facts in a really compelling and interesting way. Yeah. Like, she's good at her job. That's, I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can't really complain. She probably should be in prison for some of the things that she's done, but she's good at her job. If she went to Azkaban and she could interview those people, that would be crazy. Ooh, prison interviews. That would be actually yeah. fascinating. That would be a good bit of writing. Little docu-series <laughs> on the Azkaban <laughs> inmates. I would actually be kind of into that. If Rita wrote something like that, I would definitely be into that. Um... There's not a ton else that happens in this chapter, really. They have discussions on Barty Crouch a little bit. They have discussions on why the goblins are looking for him, on where he even is, because they just don't know where he is at the moment. Um, they talk about Hagrid. Um, uh, there is one lovely part in this when they're, they go to Hagrid and they're about to knock down his door because Hagrid doesn't want to like leave his room. Mm -hmm. and uh um they're like we'll blast down the door and then all of a sudden dumbledore answers he like opens haggard's door and it's dumbledore with haggard there <laughs> and uh it says hermione went slightly pink but dumbledore smiled at her and continued hermione harry and ron still seem to want to know you judging by the way they were attempting to break down the door of course we still all want to know you harris harry said staring at haggard i love that so much that they're like yeah, we still want to be your friend, even though you're a half giant. And Dumbledore says this wild line where he says, trying to comfort Hagrid, my own brother Aberforth was per, uh, prosecuted for practicing inappropriate charms on a goat. So the question is, what the <laughs> heck was Aberforth doing? I have a hunch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, no, it's not good. All right, we'll move on. So like, you can't say it's a goat of yeah. all animals <laughs> and just an inappropriate one. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh my. Someone actually asked uh, Joe this live at a convention. And she looked at the person who asked and, and she says, how old are you? And she said she was like, you know, 12 or something like that. And she's like, okay, that's a conversation I'll have another time. She's like, well, then maybe ask your parents when you're a little older what, what is going on here. You're like, oh, the oh heck? My God. Why are you even including this stuff in there? It's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Why, <laughs> why put that? Why that? <laughs> of all things in your children's book. Maybe it has significance. Maybe it has a ton of significance. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> wasn't that a joke that like jen kept making about hagrid too what like that he liked animals <laughs> like, yeah. so much. i think we probably made that joke in passing one or two times yeah, yeah. i definitely remember that from like <laughs> the first podcast <laughs> yeah Crazy. it was definitely in there uh all right let's hit on 
Chapter 25, The Egg in the Eye. This one is essentially they just go and decipher what the clue is in the bathroom, in the prefect's bathroom. In the previous chapter, uh, Cedric, uh, <laughs> Cedric tells him how to do it, to go underwater in the prefect's bathroom, and Harry just ignores him for a few How did days. Cedric figure that out? I know, that's a great question. I don't know. Uh, Cedric's, a, Cedric's a smart dude. Cedric's a hottie. Also, yeah, Harry is very, like, Harry's popular, but compared to Fleur, Cedric, yeah. and Crumb, he's, like, not yeah, yeah, on sure. par with them. Which I think is cool because it kind of just keeps the underdog thing going rather yeah. than like oh harry potter gets everything he's the yeah. greatest wizard ever well harry's definitely definitely popular more popular in the wizarding world but in school he's definitely not the most popular yeah which is like i love that because well i don't i love that and i don't like it because harry isn't necessarily like the cool kid at school like cedric floor and victor like those guys are like it mm. everyone wants to be like them they're like just super cool and harry's just not at that level yet yeah. So the underdog story just is so present in this, which is so great. But I think it's fitting that he's not super popular. Like, I don't think other people had just, his age would treat him yeah. like a god for yeah, no reason. For sure. Which I love. I love that yeah. about, you know, high schoolers. You just don't care about that stuff. Yeah. D- Myrtle? <laughs> <laughs> I was literally about to say that. How crazy is she? I- was screaming (laughs) i was laughing my head off reading this because first of all the mermaid painting got me and immediately i was like if this girl wakes up what is gonna happen (laughs) like i was like why do they put a mermaid painting right in front of a bathtub it is a little creepy if the paintings are alive and like living people (laughs) okay yeah and then myrtle comes out of the pipes like oh my gosh and yeah like i just this is just like icky to me like i don't want like why is harry in a tub why are we thinking about it why doesn't he have a bathing suit on (laughs) (laughs) it's just i don't want to know you know i know protect this kid yes the movies well the uh the movies are even weirder because she's in the second uh book in the second movie obviously and she is played by a 45 year old actress who plays a child so convincingly plays like this annoying creepy little girl so convincingly it is wild and in this one like you hate it because she's so creepy but you're like the acting is just so good it is like exactly what you think of myrtle it's just this this absolute creep who is like desperate (laughs) for harry to like you know jump out of the water so she can see whatever she wants to see it's like so creepy how he's like 14 right now uh i think he's around there yeah i think he's 14 that's so messed up yeah i know it is disgusting and also crumb was swimming the lake and then like the toilet flushes into the lake yeah yeah and I like, it's disgusting it's like what yeah there's all what? sorts of gross things Plumbing in the wizarding world needs to get fixed. It's just awful. I also picture the lake like a puddle. It's like it's a a way lake. too small. Because yeah. it's like the lake and then the ship takes up like 85% of it. <laughs> no, no, no. So, it's, like it's, it's like it's big. Yes, it's, it's not true. like, it's not like, you know, the biggest lake you've ever seen. But it's definitely, it's definitely a sizable lake. In the movies, it would, it would take like for sure a full day or so to walk around that thing it's huge in the movies and the books is a little bit smaller yeah because they go for walks around yeah 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 which is nice i know for sure it'd be so nice my thing my your dog for a walk there what i was gonna say my guesses that i was guessing was gonna be what the egg took i guessed the cloak his firebolt headwig or his glasses <laughs> because <laughs> i could not like remember i was like maybe it's a person maybe ron like jumped in to save him or something i was like i don't <laughs> think it took ron like that's crazy and then those are the things i was like what's valuable to harry i was like maybe they took his glasses and he like can't see them <laughs> that'd be devastating yeah that would be crazy you said his cloak his glasses his uh room stick and his wand and hedwig and hedwig oh that'd be so sad <laughs> yeah 
I love it. Hedwig at the bottom of the oh. lake. That's so funny that you thought they were the objects. Yeah. Those are probably are the things that Harry loves most. Maybe his firebolt would be first. He's not the greatest pet owner, to be completely honest. Yeah. Ron chucks his owl out the window, too. So. I know, yeah. It's a little questionable. And this is when they have the Marauder's map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they're creeping. That also is a little creepy, the Marauder's map. There's a lot of creepy things in this that are like used by pure people. So they're not creepy, but the Marauder's <laughs> map and the Invisibility Cloak are two of the most creepy objects in existence in the Wizarding World. They're powerful. Yeah. And very creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I would love having a Marauder's map, though. Yeah. Oh, well, for sure. I'm not saying crazy. I would want one. Definitely. <laughs> like, do you have anybody's location and you just like check where they are? Because mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want anybody to have my location. I don't either. But I finally gave two people my location <laughs> after like years and years and years. And they check it. And it's like fun to like check out where they are, too. Yeah. It is. <laughs> but it's funny because like they're one's in a different state. So it's like kind of cool. And I could see like what, yeah. where she's going, like yeah. building by building. I'm like, oh, she's in a Starbucks right now. That's cool. <laughs> but I don't know. I also hate having people know where I am like that. Like the Marauder's map is creepy because you can't take your location off of that. Like if you want, you could just take your location off of your friend and you can you know, yeah. stop sharing your location. This one is unconsensual. It's like whoever has this map can see everyone in the entire castle where they are doing doing whatever they want to do yeah which is crazy yeah which is wild it is uh, very very alarming a lot of creepy stuff in this chapter i wonder if you can magic yourself off the map if you have it though there is a theory that <clears throat> um the marauders aren't on the map because they created it, but everyone else is on it. But I, I'm sure that Dumbledore could probably magic himself off of it. Wait, but um, Wormtail was a marauder. That's a great question. What is everyone's theory on that? That would actually poke a lot of holes in it. Because there is... And Sirius uh -huh. was on it because Snape saw him. That's right. So that theory is wrong. People make this joke all the time. Um, where they say this is the this was the background or this is the basis for why people made this joke. This is like the argument against it. People said that Fred and George for years saw Ron sleeping with a man named Peter Pettigrew and they <laughs> never knew and they just kept hush about it. But people are like, no, that's not the case because the Marauders probably took themselves off the map so they probably couldn't see him. But that's not the case if that's because they are if they were able to see Sirius and they were able to see actually peter so fred and george are looking at this map in the middle of the night know. saying oh there's harry sleeping right there oh why is ron sleeping with a man named peter Pettigrew? what if scabbers escaped every night and he wasn't in yeah bed maybe let's ron? just say that yeah <laughs> that's better than years. the alternative Ugh. there's there's a lot of creepy objects in this this book but they're used by pure people which makes it a little bit better but they're still creepy in the hands of unpure people these objects would be horrendous like an invisibility cloak in the hands of someone who is creepy is yeah one of the creepiest things that has existed like just say there's a murderer or a serial killer and yep. you hand them the invisibility cloak and the marauders map mm -hmm. <laughs> the entire school is gonna be annihilated yeah. in like 20 minutes yep yep <laughs> it's crazy it is wild um Oh, and I was surprised that Harry told Moody right away that he saw Crouch in the office. I yeah. thought he was going to like withhold that information. Because Harry always withholds information. Exactly. So is he finally learning to trust people? I don't know. I think he's a little bit scared of Moody. Really? And knowing that Moody can see everything anyway. Yeah. I don't know. It felt out of character to me. That's an interesting one, though. That's like a good character study because I think Harry does is a little intimidated by Moody. Like Moody seems very domineering isn't really the right word, but like in charge of what Harry's doing and like how he's living and how he's acting gives him like, um, in this specific moment, he like gives him the ability to like stay hidden. And then like almost as repayment, Harry tells him the things that he saw. 
I'm sure Harry yeah. almost feels like he has to tell him under obligation. But I think there is some kind of trust that's developing between them. But it's almost like a bullied trust. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> what? Watching you think. <laughs> you give me so many fascinating points about this. All right, anything else in this chapter before we go on to the second task? Mm, I don't think so. All right, let's go on to the second task, which is all about the second task. And it is the dumbest thing because the real question is, how are the students going to watch the second task if, it is, if they are <laughs> under the lake? What? I didn't even <laughs> think about that. There's a bunch of students watching the second task and literally all they watch is students dive into the lake or walk into the lake and they're like, Looking at their watch. All right, we got an hour until they come back up. That is so weird. Do you think they had some kind of like polarized glasses? Yeah. <laughs> My headcanon is that mermaids followed them everywhere with little TV cameras. Mm. And uh, they had like little displays up there that we, they were watching it. Yeah, broadcasting it. I can see that. Because how entertaining would this be? I said this, uh, I think, even on season one of the podcast. I don't think students should do this. I think this would be so entertaining if you gave, if you made like, Give give like the f the five most powerful wizards of the age these tasks. Like how fun would this be as like a, a competition on TV? Or like a teacher's edition. Yeah, seriously, like a teacher's edition. How fun would that be? Yeah. Like every few years, you just get a bunch of super talented teachers and you run these tasks and like you have to see who the best person is. Be so fun. Interesting. McGonagall. Yeah, she would <laughs> crush these. I was, this is kind of embarrassing, but I love fish, right? Mm -hmm. So I was reading this and I was like, this is the greatest thing. <laughs> this is the greatest thing ever. So then I was like, man, I just need to make this a whole experience. So then I pulled up a video of like some lake, <laughs> like the bottom, <laughs> the, like a little exploring a lake video. Okay, and I just had that in the background as I read <laughs> Harry. So oh, it was so like quaint. I was like reading about Harry getting through all the weeds, and I'd look over and he'd be like, "The pike is a North Aww. American fish," <laughs> and it just set the vibe so nice. That is great vibes. I like that. Yeah. The pike, pike are vicious fish. Yeah, I was not really paying attention, but it made it better. It was cool. I'm kind of into that. I feel like you should read every chapter with like a little weird background a into it. Ambiance. Yeah, yeah, a little ambiance. Yeah, yeah. A little fish ambiance for this one specifically. Set the tone. <laughs> this is uh this is like a cool idea too, because no one really knew what was at the bottom of the lake. You knew like the the giant squid existed at the lake, but when Harry's going down there and he's seeing all these like little creatures and all these crazy things, it is really fascinating that uh like mermaids exist down there. Um kelpies exist down there it's like cool it is cool so the, the where the mer people mm -hmm. are they like vicious usually mm -hmm. and that was like the fear was that they were gonna eat them or something yeah because hmm. harry kind of has a freak out moment in this where he thinks that they're not going to surrender the prisoners and he comes up and ron's like you're a idiot i felt that like in my yeah. bones really like, oh yeah because like harry's doing such a good job I know. and the thing is i realize like harry cares about all those people yeah minus like fleur's sister but he like people were saying that the other three champions didn't take it seriously but mm -hmm. i think they did it was just that harry was like so overwhelmed by the fact that like the other people like his close friends might die because of the yeah. other champions not being good yeah but like they the other champions went down there like cedric boom got hermione yeah. and was or not hermione cho and was out like i don't know i think that's was a i didn't agree with that <laughs> didn't like that i do like that harry did that though he's an idiot yeah but uh he definitely has this like he wants to save as many people as possible it's like in his blood um yeah and fleur was like shaken up too yeah so she was taking it seriously yeah she was taking it very seriously yeah because who's to say that they're not gonna die like i know <laughs> they said they didn't no, tell them that at all they said no one would die but like yeah. they could be trapped in the lake forever their uh their briefings of like what is going to happen in these tasks is a little rough like um i think that they should tell i don't know maybe they shouldn't maybe this is like good 
good uh, task creating. But I'm like, what's the harm in telling the students that like, okay, we have, we have, you know, Ron's down there or your sister's down there where they're not going to be down there, but you have to go find them right now. I guess it like takes the edge off a little bit. So maybe you're not like trying crazy hard, but yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting one. I thought I misread the clue. I thought it was going to start as soon as the egg started singing its song. I was like, oh, your mm. hours like starting now. But that was kind of weird because the clue doesn't prepare them really. No. Yeah. I guess underwater for an hour. Yeah. Like, so it, it prepares them for what they have to do, but it doesn't really prepare. Uh, kind of. Like they know that they have to learn how yeah. to stay alive for an hour. Yeah. Like they'll have to look underwater and for an hour. And they can't just get like a scuba tank. I know. They had that idea. <laughs> I think uh, I think they had that idea. And they were like, no, it would be too difficult. You couldn't like summon one by you because you're so far away. Can't you buy one? <laughs> get Amazon over Hogsmeade? there real quick. <laughs> yeah, Hogsmeade, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They did say that because like there was some kind of lungs like yeah. aqua lungs that if they were yep. traveling around the countryside by themselves everyone would get suspicious yeah 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 so they couldn't know. do that but it's a great idea it's a good good thought um there is one thing here that that uh they talk about snape real quick and um they're talking about snape's first and second chance it says here moody said dumbledore only lets snape stay here because he's giving him a second chance or something i just want to know what snape did with his first chance if he's on his second one said harry grimly why does snape what did snape do that he needs a second chance he served the dark lord oh interesting i, think. I don't know i think right. and then he came back and is actually sad all right. He's he regrets what he's done. So he's like serving time now. I don't know. It feels side. like not real. I don't know if that would actually happen. But the the mark on their arms is definitely a Voldemort thing. So okay, I remember that. Yeah. So I don't know the dark mark. Yeah, for that sure confirmed my thing. Yeah, I just wrote in my notes, Snape was a Death Eater! Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm pretty convinced that he was okay. a Death Eater. But he's good now. You're convinced that he's good now? Um, I think he's a little wishy-washy, but yeah, <laughs> I think he's ultimately going to stay with Dumbledore. Stay with a good side? I think so. <clears throat> All right. I think so. Um, Would you rather face a dragon for an hour? Or go in icy water to find someone that you loved for an hour? Um, probably a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm outside for like five minutes in the cold right now. I'm like, get me back inside. I hate this. It's true. At least with a dragon, I might die, but I'll be warm while I die. Yeah, they'll breathe fire on you. Exactly. It'll be nice. I know. So cozy. You say cold showers? No. Oh, you should. No, that's crazy. <laughs> They're good. My I showered this morning and my hair is still wet right now. <laughs> that's ridiculous. I hate this. <laughs> um, no, cold showers calm your mind. Do you so finish with a cold shower? Do you um, like start with a cold shower? Is the whole shower cold shower? I so I was doing my daily runs in January okay. every single day and I would take like an entirely cold shower. But then usually I would say I'll finish with it cold or at least colder than I showered just because <laughs> yeah. it takes the edge off like opening the door and being like ah! Yeah, it's kind of like, true. Yeah. So yeah, but then sometimes I'm serious. The only thing that will give me like complete mental silence is a freezing cold shower. Really? Uh, I It was like the first time I had a cold shower. I it was like a new experience. Like I've never experienced that in my entire life where like my brain was just like silent. Ooh. And it was the nicest thing. And then you get addicted to that because your brain is yeah, yeah, on yeah. all day. Yep. And then, yeah. It's interesting. I'm going to take a cold shower next. If I take a cold shower, I will be cold the rest of the day. I will not warm up the rest of the day. 
I'll just be cold. You gotta sleep with socks on. <laughs> That's the key. <laughs> just sleep with socks on, take yeah. cold showers, and I'll be good. Um, <clears throat> we used to do ice baths in, in when I was in college for uh, soccer, and let me tell you, those things were agony. But we would always like, <clears throat> um, like one up each other. So when I was a freshman, most people would just like you know sit on a stool outside, just like you just put your calves in or something like that. <laughs> and then by the time I was a senior, we were going full in up to our, our necks, and we would just say we would see who can stay in there longest, and it was like the coldest water I've ever experienced in my life. And we would just sit there in these in these like little tin metal mm. tubs, and we would just sit there. We'd all be freezing, and then. Me, it was always between me and Jeremy who would stay in there longest, and he always beat me because I just couldn't do it because he was psychotic and just could just <laughs> sit in that thing for his whole life if he wanted to. Cold plunging is like really popular right now. I know everyone's doing it, but people are. I'm like, you're buying this tub, you're like breaking the ice. Just go in a cold shower. It does not <laughs> yeah. need to be like that. What's the difference? They're like Vikings. I know. I don't know. That's why I thought Krum was Krum was swimming. I was like, maybe he's trying to like get used to the water yeah, yeah yeah but i don't know he was he was yeah he was trying to get used to the water but he was also trying to transfigure so he was uh, transfiguring so he was practicing his, his uh human transfiguration because i just thought you said they're from the north right yeah so i was like he's probably just doing his daily swim yeah it could be he was doing his daily swim i don't know maybe he he's like was constantly trying to practice human transfiguration into a shark and he was just continuing on the practice and he just got lucky cold water and we don't drive though <laughs> maybe maybe i'll give a give a shot um <clears throat> all right anything else in this chapter where we go into 27 the final one for this one i don't think so all right 27 is a bit of a doozy there's a lot of information that's given in this one but this is padfoot returns where essentially they have a whole download of information with padfoot which is serious black I like the first line of this chapter, too. Mm. Should I just read it? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I hate reading things. No way, you're um, great. One of the best things about the aftermath of the second task was that everyone, everybody was keen to hear the details of what had happened down in the lake, which meant that Ron was getting to share Harry's limelight for once, <laughs> which is good. He yeah. needed that. As much as I disagree with his jealousy, it is nice that he has his little moment of Finally. Fame. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like regaling people with the story. Like Ron is definitely like living in luxury right here. Yeah. Living it up. So is it like very dangerous for Sirius to be in Hogsmeade? He's still on the run. He's still at large. Because they haven't absolved him of his crimes yet. So if they find him, he will likely get the Dementor's kiss. <laughs> Which is Dementors. We could talk about that again. <laughs> there is a line about Dementors in here. Yeah. Um, they're talking about, is this Crouch Jr. gets the Dementors? Yeah. Yep. I keep seeing people in the Discord talk about Crouch Jr. <laughs> and I'm like ignoring yeah, everything. Yeah, ignore everything about so that. So hard. People on Discord are talking about Crouch Jr.? They what the were. Heck? Like, I don't know what they were talking about, but I kept seeing Barty Crouch Jr. And I was like, okay, I guess he has a son. Now you get to know his son. Yeah, but I still know not a lot about him. <clears throat> mm, yeah. I feel like a lot goes down in this chapter, though. Mm, mm -hmm. A lot of lore. Some of the next few chapters are going to be great. You're going to like them. Good. Specifically chapter 30. <laughs> okay. You're going to like it. I'm really going to try to be better at reading this because it's just dumb. Okay. I just get in bed. <laughs> I read like three paragraphs and I fall asleep <laughs> every single time. And then it's like three nights of that. And I'm like, yeah. all right, I got to start over because yeah. I don't even know what I was reading. And then I get to the point that I've read over the past three days. And I'm like, boom, at the same time. Like, I can't keep doing this. It's just... No, but you read. You're good. And then when it when it keeps on going, I, I really am pretty convinced that you're going to get hooked. Especially toward the end of this book. I think you're going to be like very, very into it. And then we'll... uh. I think it's going to be, you're going to,
probably still fall asleep, but you're going to want to keep reading. I'm not even like, I'm not, it's not boring me to yeah, sleep. Yeah, sure. It's just lulling me. Yeah. yeah and yeah, I was I thinking, that. I was like, if this, if I was not doing the podcast, would I still be rereading it? Because I was Ooh. rereading it before being on the podcast, yeah. but I was doing it like, because I had started listening to season yeah, yeah, yeah. one. So I was like, oh, okay, now I really got to read it again because it had been on my TBR to reread it. But I was like, I wonder how much this is impacting my commitment mm. to reread it if I'm kind of struggling to reread it. But like my heart is in it. Like yeah, I, want, yeah. I, I really yeah. want to, but it's just, I feel like it would be, I probably would have stopped by now. I don't yeah. know. Well, Maybe you or not stop, but cared, like yeah, yeah, certainly sure. not have like yeah. twenty annotating things in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I've never done this before, really. This is great. Like, I love this. this. Much. Well, we're just speeding through this so we can get to Lord of the Rings. This is like a little uh, excursus, yeah. so we can get there. And if we didn't do this, you would have like ten thousand voice memos of me just <laughs> Which being is like, great. "Yeah, I would turn and that into a podcast." You hate voice memos. Why do you hate voice memos? And you have podcasts. Voice memos and podcasts are two very, very different things. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that was like a little aggressive. <laughs> okay, well, state your case. Well, you're going on my throat being all aggressive saying I hate voice memos and I'm do I have a podcast. There's no similarities between the two except you just speak. Do you feel like assaulted by voice memo? Like yes. you didn't ask for it? Yes. Why can't you send a text? <sighs> because I just... It's a voice memo. You're just it's lazy. one minute of your life. <laughs> and yeah, you but get... with a text, I can read it at any time. With a voice memo, I have to be like, oh, great. Okay, now I have to like literally have my phone up and I can I have to listen to this thing. I can't do anything <laughs> else but listen to this thing. When I have a text, I can just scan it real quick and then I'll be like, okay, let me revisit this in a little bit. With a voice memo, it's going to disappear after two minutes. I'm like, great. Now I got to actually respond. And Just I rem set them all to autosave and then just read the transcript. Well, yeah, that's what they have the transcript now, which it's is huge. This is great. But still, I'm like, why? If, if I'm reading a transcript, why can't you just do speak to text? Okay. <laughs> Valid. I just still think there's something like I choose the delivery of a voice memo for a reason on purpose because I don't just want it to be a text. Well, I do that, too, but not a not a voice memo. I do Marco Polo's. What is that? It's just like a stupid video sharing app. So it's like facetime but like you send calls back and forth with your friends i have one person i do that with and it's like the best it's so fun do you I'm like, like I want more people have it. no i hate FaceTime. but i'm like it's fun like it's better than a voice memo to me if you're like talking with someone and you're like we send it depends on the the week sometimes we'll send like 20 back and forth to each other sometimes we don't send any back and forth to each other but it's like better than a voice memo because we're seeing each other and we're seeing like okay this is what you're doing it's most of the time like i'm in a car or they're in a car or like I'm on a walk and they're on a walk or whatever it is. It's like just random parts throughout your day. So I'll be taking Wes for a walk in the park and I'll be like, oh, let me just like, you know, send him a quick uh, response. I love phone calls, but I hate FaceTime. Really? Yeah. Because I do not need to be seeing my face. You do not need to be seeing my face. <laughs> but I appreciate when I text you in a voice memo and you respond in voice memo. Well, yeah. If someone, yeah, yeah. And I don't do that with like a ton of people. I don't really, if someone sends you a voice memo, I'll usually listen to it and like type it out. Like my brother sends me, it's all he sends me. Yeah. And I'm like, Jake, I, I like, you sent me like a three second voice memo that you're like, hey, by the way, like I'm in my, my office and this happened. And I'm like, just text me that. You're not doing anything else. What is so hard about moving your thumbs and texting so I could just read that? But like if someone's if someone's like sending me interesting voice memos, I will I'll always respond to it. Or like I, if there's an interesting person that's sending me voice memos, I'll respond to it. But I'm like, my, you're my brother. I see you all the time. I don't want to respond to your voice memos. <laughs> You've also said it in voice memo to me like three times, where you're like, I hate voice memos. Yeah. But yeah. blah blah. I'm like, get over it. Like, <laughs> all right, can't. fine. I'll get over myself. <laughs> no. It's funny. And then I feel like I'm bothering you, but in like a annoying on purpose like haha -ha, kind of way like, great you so to you're listen. just gonna keep sending me voice memos yes i'm gonna make you download marco but polo think, and send you marco polo just think of how many voice memos are being saved right now by doing hours of podcasts <laughs> that's what this that's what i was getting at yeah okay there you go because now you just actually have to listen to me talk for like four hours <laughs> instead of this is so much better though. this is a conversation <laughs> a voice memo is like but don't speak <laughs> i 
this is shameful, but like when people send me long voice memos, I will literally start taking like a note, like jot down what they said, like yeah, yeah, yeah. and like oh, the absolutely. first minute yeah, yeah. because you gotta cover, yes. you gotta cover all the ground. Yes, I do that with uh, Marco Polo all the time because sometimes I'll send, we'll send like ten to fifteen minute long messages, and I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a long one. I have to sit down with a notepad <laughs> and be taking notes so I remember all the points. Yeah. It's a commitment. Yeah, it's wild. It's wild. <laughs> I don't know how we anyway. got on that. But, <laughs> um, uh, so there's a bunch of other... They talk about uh, Rita Skeeter. They give like information on um, like Verita Serum, which is like a truth-telling serum, which is a little creepy as well. I mean, wait, was this, what was the thing that McGonagall gave them after the lake? Pepper Up? Yeah, Pepper Up Potion. Oh, I want that I know. so bad. I want that every day in my life. <laughs> that seems amazing. That would be my morning coffee every yes. single morning. I would take a cold shower in that case. I'll take a cold shower, have a little Pepper Up Potion, and you're yes. good to go. Oh, my gosh. That it's sounds like five-hour energy or something. Yeah, for real. Um, I have a funny note here when Snape, let me see, what was Snape doing? I think Snape was being mean to Harry in class. Mm -hmm. typical. Um, typical, very typical. And I wrote, Snape is not entirely wrong. And I was like, I was agreeing with Snape. And then he threatened to use the serum. Yeah. And then immediately my note just goes, never mind, Snape is evil. Ooh, <laughs> dang. It's just like he's he's okay sometimes, but he just goes so far. He's He is kind of evil. Like I'm starting to question his deep down inside morals. Like would he actually do that to Harry? What do you think? Do you, do you think he would actually do that to Harry? I don't know. That's why I asked you that question. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to answer that question because it's a fascinating just one. Just answer your you opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, the <clears throat> You're asking the most controversial question that exists in the Harry Potter universe. Whether Snape is actually, would actually do these things or not. People are so divided on this question. And I'm in a minority opinion on that. Okay. That's normal for you. <laughs> I don't think he would. I don't think he... I don't think the serum... I don't think he'd use the Veritas yeah. serum. I think Snape is an abuser, but I think he's a verbal abuser. Like a threatener? Yeah. You hmm. don't see him actually being physical with any of the students. <laughs> He just, he's just, a, he's an abuser of his power. Like he has power over the students. Yeah. And he kind of, actually it's, sometimes it's even worse. It's like psychological. Like he really knows the weak spots of students and knows how to get at them. Only the students that he dislikes. So it's pretty nasty. It's pretty terrible. But I don't think Snape would ever go to the point of physical abuse. But maybe there's chapters later that we'll talk about that because maybe Snape does get physically abusive in some way. Oh, so okay. we'll see. I would agree with that. But it still leans toward him being very evil on the inside because, okay, I'll think something bad about someone. But for mm -hmm. me to go out of my way to, like, be mean to someone. Yeah. I just don't do that. Like, why would I waste my energy? And he does that. Like, that's his brand is literally – going out of his way to be a mean person. That's because he's a jackass. He's just, he is just a mean person. And I feel like you're starting to see that in this book right now. Like, yeah. I don't argue that he's a good person. I just argue that his meanness has bounds. Okay. Which is maybe a weird thing to say, but you know, like I know some mean people and they're just, they just do whatever they want. Well, <clears throat> he also has a career to yeah. maintain. Which and is why uh, he's on a second it. chance for something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Which I don't know what that is yet, but he he doesn't have the freedom to just do whatever he wants. But how do you think that he still has a job after like even this kind of stuff? Like if he's being evaluated by Dumbledore by the Ministry of Magic and they see him saying some of this stuff to students, they're like, No way you're teaching at this school anymore. You're being psychologically torturous to Neville Longbottom or to Harry Potter or to Hermione. Like you saw her big massive buck teeth and you're you're like I don't see any difference. 
<laughs> yeah, it's terrible. <gasps> that was really funny. I would <laughs> That's have a great died. line. I know. He is comedic relief, to be honest. I think Dumbledore is babysitting him. I don't think Dumbledore trusts him to be outside of Hogwarts doing things. <sighs> that's why he had... Like, that's what I thought with... um lupin at some point mm-hmm. i was like that's why he has him at hogwarts is just so he can keep his eye okay on him and even like serious he had like an evening of being protected at hogwarts but i don't know i think dumbledore maybe is like keeping tabs on him um and that's why huh. he got moody like is moody here to babysit people is Moody maybe, here to maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe he just got Moody in because of his eye, so Moody can keep an eye on everything. Not even just a pun on that. So he could just literally like watch everything that's going on. Because this is the chapter where we start talking about Crouch yeah. being the like police guy. Yeah. What is what was that? The head of magical law enforcement. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um so then Moody and him have like that history together because Moody was mm-hmm. a crazy horror. Yeah. Which I think is the coolest job ever. Yeah, for sure. Um, But yeah, like they work together at some point, but now they're like against each other. Or like Moody's like watching him and Crouch is gone and then Crouch is snooping around for something. <laughs> like I genuinely am so confused. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I love this. <laughs> I do not understand. This is great. You should be confused. I'm really confused. I'll give you Veritas serum and make you tell me everything <laughs> that happens. Uh, what do you think about the whole Barty Crouch Jr. thing? His son. That is insane. Yeah. Like, I didn't have... When I was reading this, I didn't have the time to, like, sit there and process. But yeah, yeah. thinking about it now, like... Wow. I know. That is messed up. Because... He didn't say like he only really put his son on trial for the appearance of like, um, I guess, yeah, doing things legally. But like, if he was not even going to give his, wow, I'm getting too into this. If he was not even going to give his son a trial, yeah, yeah. like, you are evil. Like, that's so messed up. Um, I don't know. I don't understand all of these like layers of the story yet. There's, there's, kind of a point to that but there's also a sub point where crouch in that try like in what he's doing is like i think sirius mentioned that he is like he didn't want to appear necessarily above the law but he also like relished the opportunity opportunity because crouch exhibits the law to a T, the letter of the law. Like he follows that with relish. And so even if it's a son, he'll put a son on stand and with no preferential treatment. But he used the unforgivable curses without trial or anything. Like you could just kill whoever. So that's not really following the law. Yeah, that's a great point. It's not following the law, but it's it's like the <laughs> almost the opposite. It's like you don't even care. Crouch it's- is the law. Yeah. Okay. Great point. He's like a Dumbledore. He is the law. He thinks he's the law. He thinks he's above the law. But do you think that Crouch is right in this or is he wrong? Is Crouch Jr.'s son right? For what? Um, like, so we'll, we'll talk about the unforgivable curses. Do you think that they did the unforgivable curses? His son did yeah. it? I don't know because all it says is that he was like caught up with other Death Eaters. Okay. But it doesn't really say that he was a Death Eater. Yeah. You don't get a ton of information on him here. So do you think that uh, his father, let's say that that situation is right. Do you think his father is, um, let's say let, let's say the son is lying. Let's say the son really wasn't caught up in that and was actually doing it purposefully. Would the father be right to not give them a trial and just just to execute their the sentence if he was 100 percent guilty yeah i guess so <laughs> <laughs> i don't know because i feel this like 
theme of once a death eater always a death eater okay and i feel like it just latches on to you and you can't truly leave just because of the power that voldemort has to threaten you mm. and manipulate you and he'll kill your family like stuff like that so i feel like there's always a risk of the death eaters going back hmm. so in that sense unless you have the ability to kill Voldemort and truly like release the Death Eaters from their chains mm. and you know they really can go free. Okay. But then if Voldemort's still alive and he's on the rise, <laughs> like I don't trust anybody that's ever been associated with him because yeah. he's just going to threaten torture. Yeah. And if you threaten torture, I'm definitely bowing down to you again. <laughs> like, hello. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm not surviving that. So... That's know. interesting. The idea of once a Death Eater, always a Death Eater. We will revisit that idea because that is a fascinating thing that you just said. Because that's like even why Snape's arm, like his yeah. scars going. Um, <laughs> Kichi Jiro, you remember that? Yeah. It's Snape to me. I have wow. thought that hundreds of times over and over and over. That is Snape to me. And I don't know if that... Like, you're going to include that. But for you, I know you get that reference. And I just think about it over and over again because that's how I'm seeing it. Kichichiro. Dang. Just the way he's like... Because I can't even say that Kichichiro was, like, wishy-washy. Like, he almost, like, swung the full way yeah. every time. Yep. So I don't know. Like, Snape's pendulum hasn't really swung yet, but... Is it? Oh, I just, it's just resounding in my mind so many times. Dang, that's a fascinating one. Because I don't mind Kichijiro. Like, he was never like a bad character to me. I, like, he kind of wrecked my life, to yeah, be honest. I hate him, but. But like, I, I don't know. I really like Kichijiro. <laughs> and I hate him. But he, like, I just, I feel like I see myself in him a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I think we're all supposed to see ourselves a little bit in Kichi Chiro. And it just ruined my life for so long. Yeah. And I don't know. I'm over it now, but it was bad. But I don't know. I feel that, I feel like Snape is a little Kichi Chiro y. <laughs> um, and that's funny because I don't really think about that book that much. He's a he's a great character though, such a well written character. Because I feel like you are kind of supposed to see your, your see yourself in that. His betrayal, his coming back, his betrayal, his coming back. He just goes back and forth all the time, and he's very con and you're very kind of kind of convinced. You don't trust him, but you're convinced of what have, whatever he's going through, whether it's his betrayal or his his uh, repentance that he's like really convinced of that. Yeah. And like That's Snape, a good comparison. Snape saved Harry's life. Mm. That was like one of the pendulum swings. I feel. Yeah. Dang, that's that's interesting, Lizzie. Um. Yeah, that's a good point. Have you thought about that? Before? No. I mean, uh, yeah. I'm so curious. You got to keep me updated with with uh, with your take on Snape as we keep on going throughout the series, because that comparison is a really really fascinating one. So I'm curious whether you're going to maintain that or whether you're going to kind of shed that and think he's just really like exclusively bad or exclusively good, or if he really does just keep flirting between the two and going back and forth all the time. And maybe we just don't see enough behind the scenes to see really how volatile he is and how much he's going back and forth. But you got to give me your update on him every once in a while for what you think he's doing. That's a good one. In voice memo form. Yeah, in voice memo form. I'm down. If you send me voice memos about Harry Potter, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else in this before we wrap it up? Um, Snape was never even accused of being a Death Eater. Yeah, there you go. I don't like oh I'm Dude, confused. Yeah. And then I was like confused for a while. Is is this junior kid like this kid in the beginning? Cause I haven't read that chapter again. But there's some child in the beginning that we don't know who he is. 
And I was like, I don't know what's going on. But I'm still confused about chapter one. I still keep thinking about that. <laughs> like This book is all over the place. When you, uh, the last few chapters of this, it'll really like, you're in the part now where the story's going to come together a little bit more. Because one thing that's different about this book than I think some of the others is like in the first book, you almost had a clear destination of where you were going. Like yeah. you knew you were trying to figure out about who this Nicholas Smell guy was, the Sorcerer's Stone. In this book, you have no idea where it's going. You're like, what the heck is even like the mystery part of it? There, you know, a bunch of mysteries exist, but you don't know how they all tie together or really what's going on. And the end of the book and of how it like it pieces things together and it shows you it, like weaves this narrative throughout it and like. You're like, how could I have been so stupid and not know what was going on? <laughs> it's going to be great. So you're going to kind of get blindsided by a few things. But some, maybe some of your predictions nailed it. Maybe some of your predictions have been way off. But it's going to be, I think it's going to be fun for you. Because this book, again, it starts off really hot. And then it does kind of lull into a sleep of world building. And a lot of people mm -hmm. love it for that. But then the last few chapters, it kicks into like a very, very high gear. And you're like chapters at the end so get ready do people die in this one i don't know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> liar <laughs> i know very clearly don't lie whether to me. or not they do <laughs> you will not hear a peep out of me but anyway tell me your any your favorite moment in this these uh chapters um i really like when harry's stuck in the stairs <laughs> really um and he just an odd moment he like is like okay, I gotta get Moody to like give me the map, and he's like motioning to him. That's like no, that's mine. Yeah. Um, I just like to imagine that. <laughs> that's a good moment. Um, I don't know. There's I'm so many that. good moments, like all of the Tri Wizard stuff. Yeah, yeah. I really want to see this movie. This is the like reading this book has me thinking about the movie more than the other two because I haven't watched the movies. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, I really want to see Under the Lake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a favorite moment right there. Um, under the Lake. I do not want to see the whole egg in the bathtub thing. Mm -mm. We can just skip that. Yeah, yeah. I'm down with that. We can skip that one. Um, but yeah, there's so many good moments. Like all of the Yule Ball stuff. Yeah, the Yule Ball is one of my favorite stuff. Yeah. There's so many little cute moments there, but so many frustrating moments. Ron's an idiot, but yeah, I like the Yule Ball moments. Who's your favorite character? Serious, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Serious is great. Honestly, Serious is a great one here. Yeah, I almost said Dumbledore because whoa, that's <laughs> controversial. I and I feel like, am I wrong in saying Dumbledore is not really a big part of these books, like up till this part? Yeah. And really, he's this, oddly absent. He's almost like a side character. Yeah. In a lot of this. Yep. So it's strange why you hate him so much, even though he's just. Side <laughs> I don't hate character. him. Why do you? Why kidding. do you think kidding. I hate him? <laughs> No, your take on Dumbledore is just so fascinating. I was talking to people in our uh, Discord about that the other day, and people love your take on Dumbledore. The members who are actually like, we're, we're seeing some of your first um, thoughts on Dumbledore. They love it because a lot of them agree that Dumbledore is pretty manipulative. Yeah. And pretty, uh, he thinks he's above the law and he just does what he wants and he's not the most trustworthy person. There's debate on that for sure, which is what we have. But Yeah. But he has, I like the way he interacts with the people from the other schools. Yeah. Um, he has good lines. So, you know, I'll just go out on a limb and I'll say Dumbledore. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm right. given Sirius the title. Yeah, yeah. I know I will give it again to Sirius, but we'll just say Dumbledore. I like that. I'll, uh... Sirius can be the hot tamale. I'm going to give it to Harry. Sirius can be the hot tamale. Yeah, Sirius <laughs> is a very hot tamale. The dog. Yeah, he's got that dog in him. <laughs> um, yeah, who's my hot tamale? I'm giving. I'll give my favorite to Harry. I think he has great moments in these chapters. I'll give my hot tamale to Victor Crumb. I kind of should <laughs> give it to Hermione, but I feel like Vic is. This is why I give it to Vic because in this relationship, Victor is kind of the person that like he can go out with anyone that he wants because he's an international Quidditch sensation, and the other person would be like floored that Vic is like taking them mm -hmm. out. He seems like he's the opposite 
where he seems like he's taking Hermione out and he is ecstatic and can't stop talking to her because he's just so <laughs> obsessed with her. He's like, this is the coolest thing that this babe from Hogwarts is letting me take her out to the Yule Ball. And he's so pumped up. Yeah. So I'm like, that is like BDE. That's like my guy is like... And he's, he's, hot he's fully inviting her to come visit him too. Yes, which is so just... He's making yeah, moves. I know. Yours is serious though? Yeah. Serious is a hot tamale. But he's honestly just a dog in these. So <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should change it. You just like dogs. Aberforth has a thing <laughs> with goats. You have a thing with dogs. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Undo that. Hey, I'll Unsend. take that out. Cut it. Um, Cut it, John. Future John. Um, oh, serious is a good one, honestly. But I'm know. just saying that based on nothing, like just based on my no. Serious is a good hot tamale in here. He's, I mean, yeah, he's a dog, but he pops up into the chapter, the last chapter, where he like gives a, a huge ton of information, and he's just living in the wild. That's why you like him because he's like he's living in a cave in the wild, and he's like a rugged man on the run. <laughs> He sounds it's really hot. rugged. Yeah. Right <laughs> He's a little too oh, rugged. Too rugged. <laughs> I don't know. Like, no one's portrayed as being really hot. How about McGonagall when she lets her hair down? Yeah, there, there you go. go. <laughs> that is hot tamale right there. That's some hot girl energy. <laughs> yep. Okay, we'll go with McGonagall. I like it. That's a good one. Well, you want to close out? Thanks for joining us on our journey of Harry Potter and the Second Time Readers. See ya. Peace.